Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 1E of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. The question I'm going to do is question 8 and that's on page 35. So you can read the, uh, the question yourself and it defines two vectors. It says the first vector is P and P is equal to 8 units in the H 8i plus J hat. So what that means, now I won't say, what I haven't defined here are my unit vectors, I'll just quickly define them. So let's say that's i hat and that's j hat. Now remember again the difference between unit vectors and dimensions, or uh, right, unit vectors and the axes. So the x-axis right, is, is, is along here, and we use the vector, we use the i hat vector to say that something is in the x-axis, okay? So that, that's why we use this. So the 8i means 8 units in the positive x-axis, or in the positive y direction, because this direction here is positive for the uh, for the i hat vector, well, of course we could define them this way if we want, or this this way like that. Any way you want, but we've defined them. I'm going to define them as I have here. So this means that it's eight units in the x-axis, positive x-axis, and one unit in the positive y-axis. So I've broken up by thing: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units in the x-axis, positive, one unit in the y, and I'm here. And then q, we're given q is minus seven i plus four j. So that's minus seven units in negative, uh, in negative x-axis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four, plus, plus four units in the y dimension, one, two, three, four, like that. Now, with all these questions, the first thing you do, of course, is you, you, you um, resolve your resultant vector, so vector q or vector p, into their component unit vectors. However, we're actually given it in this, we're told that the, uh, the, we'll say the, the vector P is made up of a vector here along the x-axis of 8 units like that and here along the y-axis of 1 unit. We're told that the Q is made up of a vector going 7 units in this direction and 4 units in this direction. So we're already given it. So let's just put those in. We have 4, 7, 8 and 1. Now I'm going to call this angle here theta and this angle here alpha. Well, we can, can see that, you sure can. So, we don't need to resolve it, it's already resolved. So, well, let's just, without actually reading further into the question, well, the other thing we do is if we, we find out the magnitude of the component vectors which we have, and we also try and get the angles. Now, what do we use for that? This is uh, something we've done in every single question in this chapter. We use a bit of trigonometry, and we use, of course, the acronym. Sakatoa, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. Now, also we use Pythagoras because you want to get the magnitude of these vectors. The magnitude, remember, it's it's a right angled triangle, and the magnitude will be the hypotenuse squared, that's the magnitude of the vector, is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. So we'll say that we have the vector P, that's the vector P, okay? Uh, to say that we want the magnitude, you do straight angle brackets like that. So the magnitude of P is equal to H, which is equal to the square root of the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. This is stuff we have seen over and over again. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say the magnitude of the vector Q, like that, is equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 4 squared, like that. That's 49 plus 16 is equal to the square root of fi or 65, like that. So let's just get our calculator. Get the square root of it, and we get uh, an answer of 8.06. I'm actually going to leave it as root 65 because when you're dealing with, if you're dealing with things like this, decimals are always a bad thing to use. So you know the magnitude of the vector q is a square root of 65 units in length. So what's the magnitude of the vector p? Well the vector p, uh, there's the vector p, there's its magnitude, is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 8 squared, is also equal to the square root of 65, if you just do that small bit of mathematics. That's the first thing. So we know what the magnitude of them. Now we can get the angle. Now there are plenty of ways you can get the angle. You can use sine, which means you need, we'll say, the opposite for the angle and the hypotenuse. 
which we have now that we have the square root 65 of magnitude. We can use cosine, which is the same, or we can use tangent. And tan would be opposite over adjacent. So we could have, let's just, uh, I'll do, I'll just do P for the moment, right? So P would be, we'll say sine of alpha is equal to 1 over root 65. Therefore, alpha is equal to the inverse sine of 1 over root 65. Like that. So, where's my calculator? We say shift sine for inverse sine 1 divided by the square root 65. Close it off like that. And we get uh, an answer of 7.12. Alpha is approximately 7, we'll say degrees. Approximately 7 degrees like that. Now, just to prove that all of the other you can do is different ways. We're going to go for tangent this time. So we'll say tan alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent. So is equal to, let me think now, is equal to 1 over 8, like that. Therefore we'll say inverse tan of 1 over 8. We'll say shift tan 1 divided by 8 is equal to 7.12, which is approximately 7. So both ways would give us the same answer. So alpha is approximately 7 degrees. So the next question is, what is theta? So theta, we'll say, well, this time we'll go for cosine. So cos of theta is equal to 7 over root 65. Therefore, theta is equal to the arc cosine of 7 over root 65. Now remember, of course, that arc cosine is the same thing as, as the same thing as inverse cosine. All right, that's the same thing. I'm doing that just so you see these different ways, and if you ever see them on a paper, you don't get confused. So we'll say inverse, or say shift cos cosine seven divided by the square root sixty-five, like that, equals twenty-nine point seven degrees. So we'll say theta is approximately thirty degrees. Look, I'm being very approximate here. Obviously, if you want, you can put down the the full decimals. Uh, that's your own business. So here we go, like that. Turn off my calculator, and we're we're, we're asked uh, we're asked to show that the p and q are of equal magnitude. Well, we've done that because we've shown that both of them are magnitude of root sixty-five in length, and find the the tan of the angle between them using a certain formula. Find the tan of the angle between them. Okay, well, let's just find the tan of the angle. Let's just let's just think about it a small bit, right? So the tan of the angle between them. Now I'm going to just write. Uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to clear up my diagram here a small bit. I'm going to clear it up a small bit, right? So bear with me here now. I'm going to get rid of a, a lot of detail. So we know we have a vector here. We have a vector here. We know that this one here is 7, this here is 30, like that. A straight, the whole, the whole line, a straight line, gives you an angle of 180 degrees. So to find out what we've left, 180 minus 30 minus 7 gives us an angle of 143 degrees here. So this angle here is 143 degrees, like that. So we're asked to find the tan of the angle between them. Right. Well, let's just first of all see the tan of uh, the tan of the tan of 143 is oh 0.75. Just check this in the back of the book. One e uh, yeah 143 degrees. The tan is three plus or minus three quarters. Yeah, that's correct. So we know the we, we know that's correct first of all. But they're asking uh, use use uh, use the formula. And the formula that's given in the book it says the following. It says tan theta, sorry now, oh, tan theta is equal to uh, plus or minus m1 minus m2 over 1 plus the product of m1, m2. Now I'm going to assume, I actually haven't done this before, so I'm going to assume that this is their, their slopes, slopes, the rate of change of one respect to the other. Slope tan. Oh yeah, tangent gives the slope. Okay, so what is what is slope? You know something. I haven't done it already, but I'm going to do a video next on on slope. 
So if you don't know what a slope is, I suggest you, you look at that video. It's going to be, you'll see it on your screen at the moment. So just very quickly, I'll, do, I'll, just, I'll describe what it is. Um, we'll say there, there's, there's a Cartesian plane, X and Y. And we'll say we have a vector going this direction here. Now what does that mean? It means that, for, we'll, say, we'll say this is one unit and that this is four units. So for every one unit we've moved across in the in the x-axis, we've gone four units in the y-axis. So you would say the slope, slope is four. So like you'd say it might be one is to four. So you would say slope equals four, and m is what people use for slope, four. Okay, that that's what that means. And tan is what we actually use. And I'm not going to explain why, but we actually use tan. Tan is the rate of change of one respect to the other. So if you think about it actually, just I, I'm not going to go into detail, this probably will confuse you. In actual fact I won't, I won't even talk about that. So for example if you had a vector here, like that, and this was 2, and this was 1, well you'd say then for every 2 units in the x you go up, uh, you go up 1 unit in the y, so it'd be, oh, I said was it 1 is to 4 last time, so this would be 2 is to 1, so your slope would be a half, m is equal to a half, like that. So slope is the rate of change of it, how quickly something is happening, and you'll see this when you start doing d differentiation, you'll understand what a slope is. So we'll say, just, just to summarize, right, slope equals tan. The slope is equal to tan. There are a lot of different reasons as to why that is the case. Uh, if you want to really, really find those out, just uh, if, if my video on slope doesn't, doesn't tell you everything, then just put a comment on the video or email me, and I'll do a more detailed one. So at the moment we're told that the tan of the angle theta, now I'm going to say that's not theta, I'm going to call it, um, uh, I'm going to call it delta, alright? So the angle delta, so I'm going to say delta is equal to the angle of 143 degrees. So, say it's is equal to the slope of the first vector minus the slope of the second vector uh, over 1 plus the product of the slopes. Right, now before we continue, there is one very important thing, thing to think about here. The angle 7 degrees, well that 7 degrees between the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and uh, the vector itself. This vector here, it's, we said it's 30 degrees, that 30 degrees is taken between, we'll say, the negative x-axis and the vector itself. Now, if you're going to compare, if you're going to compare anything, you need a reference. It's like um, if you want to compare two sprinters. Well, there's no. If you want to compare how fast they are, well, you need you, you need to well, you need to um, you need a reference, and the reference will be how quickly they will run over 100 meters. So in this case, we want to compare the angle between the two vectors. So we need something that's constant and doesn't change. So what does what, it doesn't matter where it is, but we need a reference point. So what I'm going to say is, and what it's normal is that you will take your angle from the positive x-axis, so you work around. So for example, so say for example this here is 7 degrees and it's 7 degrees because it's taken that way. This here is 90 degrees because it's taken this way. If you had a vector here and we'll say that's 30 degrees, right? This means this is 60 because 90 minus 30 is 60. So what that means, 90 minus 30 is 60, that the angle you'll take is this one. And that won't be, that'll be 90 plus 60, so that'll be 150 degrees. Like that. And of course, this angle here, that's 180. Then you get 270, and back around for 360. So you, it doesn't matter, you could do the, you could do the other way, you could decide you're taking them from the negative x-axis and going around like this. It literally doesn't matter. What is important is that you pick a reference point. So in this case, I'm going to pick the reference point as the positive x-axis, which means that the vectors I'm going to use are, I'm going to just quickly sketch them here, the vectors we're going to use, I'm going to use the vector 7 degrees, like that, with the, that, that angle there, and I'm going to use the vector, uh, what did I say it was, 150, didn't I? I said this vector here, this vector there is at 150 degrees. So there are my two vectors, uh, I'll draw the other one here. 